Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Welcome to our live webinar for CNCF, Kube Clarity, bringing clarity to your Kubernetes artifact security. I'm Libby Schultz and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm gonna read our code of conduct and then hand over to Alexi Kravtsov, software team lead and Zohar Kaufman, director of engineering, excuse me, principal engineer, both with Cisco. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee, but you can see our lovely chat box on the right-hand side. Please feel free to drop your questions there and we'll get to as many as we can. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. And please be respectful of all of our fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page at community.cncf.io under online programs. They are also available via your registration link that you used today, and the recording will be on our online programs YouTube playlist on the CNCF channel. With that, I will hand things over to Alexi and Zohar to start our presentation today. Thank you very much, uh, Libby, Libby, for this introduction. So good, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are in the world. Uh, I'm Zohar Kaufman. Uh, I was the co-founder and CTO of uh, Portshift. It was, a, it was a startup in the Kubernetes uh, security area that was acquired uh, one and a half years ago by Cisco. And together with me today uh, is Alexei Kravtsov. Alexei, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hello, everybody. My name is Alexei Kravtsov. Uh, also from the early days of Portshift, so leading the enforcement controller team, uh, mainly uh, active in the Kubernetes fields, also on uh, open sources like Kube Clarity and API Clarity. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, so today uh, we will talk about how uh, uh, we will we we can help you bring clarity to your Kubernetes artifacts. So before diving into the material that we, uh, we uh, uh, that we organized for you today, I would like to discuss uh, two uh, big mishaps that happened in the last year. So one of them uh, is Log4j. So Log4j is very popular. Uh, how popular? Every Java application or microservice that is out there is using usually is usually using Log4j, uh, and um, it has a, it, it was discovered a very uh, you know you know I would say enormous flaw. Uh, it was just like before Christmas last year. It allowed attackers to execute code remotely on the target computer, which would let them steal data, install malware, or take control of all all the whole system. So there were hundreds of millions of attempts uh, to attack, and uh, a major breach uh, were disclosed. Um, so let's go back uh, to December 2021. I'm, uh, I'm an owner of such an, uh, of an application that is using Java, that is probably using Log4j. How, how would I know if I'm vulnerable or not, uh, if I'm actually using Log4j or not? So it's, it's a good question. We will answer it in a moment. Another uh, very big happening or mishappening is the dependency confusion. So it happened again. Uh, it was publicized uh, on September uh, last year uh, by a researcher named Alex Pearson. So he wanted. Uh, he he is a, a nice guy. Tried uh, to um, to to hack into companies uh, by you know by by contract. So letting them know that he's trying and winning uh, uh, winning money if he succeeds. And, and of course, disclosing everything that he is doing. And so it's all legal and everything is fine. Uh, so he tried to uh, to do it uh, using uh, packages. So any any software now is using lots of packages. Some of them uh, are probably open sourced, uh, and these open source packages uh, can be hosted either privately in uh, in the local registry of the company or maybe in the public. Uh, so he wanted to upload his uh, code to the uh, to the public registry uh, and actually um, uh, tricking developers in order to use it and then uh, running code inside the, the you know on inside their applications 
So he had a very nice trick of letting him know that somebody is using his code. Uh, he, he, did enco he encoded all the information of the host and developer and everything inside a DNS request that was sent uh, to, to him. And then uh, he know if uh, such a DNS request uh, uh, followed through, then he, know, he knew that, uh, so, uh, that his code is running somewhere. So the first thing he tried is uh, typo squatting. It's an attack uh, that uh, leveraging uh, typos. So I, I'm taking a very popular package. I'm doing like a minor typo and uploading it, this uh, package uh, in this, uh, with this typo uh, in the public uh, repository. So if a developer is instead of QWeb that is depicted here, he just uh, prints QWeb with a typo, then maybe he will use my uh, version of uh, the library. So this was not so successful. And then he thought about something uh, much more much more clever. So um, uh, there are package managers that are used uh, widely, you know, within uh, within different uh, 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 languages. So, for example, there is a pip of uh, Python is using PyPy, which is Python package index. And uh, these package managers, if they are giving uh, the relevant uh, option in, with PyPy with uh, minus minus extra index URL, then they are searching also the public repositories and not only the private ones for the packages. And they are doing something that sounds logical. Uh, they are just uh, looking at uh, for a package uh, in all places and using the latest and greatest uh, version of that package. So it sounds you know, logical, I want to use the latest, but uh, it's opened up a door for hackers. So uh, let's assume that I have a package that is only on my private registry. Uh, it's not anywhere in the public. So I have it uh, and the version is uh, this, like here, 2021.0.3.1. Uh, uh, and now, um, some, somehow, someone knows that I'm using this private package, and this someone, Alex Beers, uh, Beersan in this case, is uploading a public package with the same name uh, to, to some public repository, but with an enormously big uh, version. Uh, so if someone is using this uh, parameter and this package, then it, they will use uh, Alex package and not their own. Um, so he, he was not sure it's, it's going to work. The way that he knew uh, which packages are used privately is using uh, in, in JavaScript, you have a, a, a file named package.json. So it contains the name of all the JavaScript product dependencies. So some of them are public, some of them are private. So this way uh, he, he, he knew uh, a list of uh, private packages used around Microsoft, Apple, uh, and various other big companies. Uh, and he tried them all and he uploaded many, uh, many packages to the public repositories. And surprise, surprise, uh, uh, almost all the companies he targeted, uh, he managed them to run his code inside uh, uh, their applications. And uh, while you trust someone, uh, someone code, then they can do anything on your machine. So this was a, a very, uh, you know, very famous, uh, uh, very famous uh, incident. And it raises the question, how do we know which packages we are actually using? So we know that we wanted to use the private ones, but which ones are actually used? So taking this into account, let's review our agenda. So first of all, we'll uh, pinpoint the problem that uh, we are going to solve. Uh, you know, bringing clarity to uh, uh, our runtime Kubernetes. And uh, then we will talk about vulnerability detection challenges. Uh, we will introduce uh, an, an open source named Cube Clarity and review its high level architecture, do a, a cool demo, uh, and uh, also talk a little bit about the roadmap. And of course, we will be happy to answer any questions uh, that you will have. So problem statement, we want to scan for vulnerabilities. Um, and so the first thing that we want is to know the building blocks of our software. Uh, so which packages are we really using? And again, think about the dependency confusion. It is, it's not a, it's such a trivial question. Uh, second, we want also to detect vulnerabilities in these building blocks. 
So even if it are the, these vulnerabilities are discovered uh, post-deployment, so maybe in CI/CD everything was okay, but in runtime, uh, during runtime, uh, the log4j uh, issue is discovered, and I want to know that I'm now vulnerable. Then we want to correlate all the vulnerable building blocks across my applications. So again, if we take, take log4j, I would like to know all the applications that I'm using in production that are actually vulnerable or using this log4j a, a, a flawed uh, version. And of course, we want to uh, do a remediation of all my applications following uh, the discovered vulnerability. But we have few challenges. Before we introduce uh, our uh, solution to that, we have, uh, we have few challenges that we need to solve. So first of all is the vulnerability detection uh, challenge of a uh, software bill of material, or in short, SBOM. So SBOM is the base of any uh, vulnerability system. So we need to know our building blocks. And if we know the building blocks, then we, uh, uh, we can list the vulnerabilities uh, for each of them. But it's not uh, uh, that easy uh, to know the SBOM for our pack, uh, all our software applications and packages. Uh, the problem, the challenges here is that various program languages uh, are are used, and each of them may use different uh, package managers. Uh, some of them are uh, listed here. For example, Java are using Maven, Node is using NP AP, uh, npm, Python is using PyPy, and there are Go models and the others. Uh, next. The OS can also introduce vulnerabilities and are different and various OS distributions. Uh, and, are, and also uh, there are package dependency information and it's not a, while building the image, probably we will strip it. So if we just take the, the image uh, that was produced uh, by our CI CD, maybe we lack uh, this, inf the, this uh, information of software bill of material. So, Taking all this into account, uh, we need, uh, we will so see uh, in a few minutes our solution to that. But let's assume that we have the, the software bill of material, the SPOM. And now we just want to know which vulnerabilities are there in these list of packages. So there are also challenges here. So, uh, there are uh, many, uh, many vulnerability scanners or SBOM analyzer in, the, the, in another name that can be used. Some of them are scanning containers, others are scanning directories of files. Uh, some of them are better in specific languages, let's say Python, others are good in JavaScript or Ruby or uh, Node. Uh, and there are, of course, uh, various Linux distributions, and uh, maybe one scanner is very good at uh, detecting uh, vulnerabilities in the OS level, but is not that good uh, at scanning JavaScript. So we, we try, we need to combine, let's say, few scanners, uh, best of breed, uh, but each of them has their own format uh, and maybe also their own way of uh, in, uh, ingesting uh, uh, the software bill of material, either SPDX listed here or Cyclone DX. So it's not trivial to take all these and unite uh, the, re uh, the results of few scanners. Next is, let's assume that every, every, uh, we solved uh, the two pro uh, problems uh, that we just discussed. How and when should we scan? So there are different phases uh, uh, of, you know, of uh, the CI CD. There is a source code, and then it's pushed to a Git repo, and then we compile it and build images, and then deploy, and then uh, uh, have it in runtime. So each of these stages uh, is adding uh, uh, actually uh, so, uh, is adding uh, uh, each of these uh, is adding a place where new vulnerabilities can be introduced. And may, where should we scan? So if we scan in all stages, maybe we are doing uh, excessive work. Otherwise, if we are scanning only in one place, maybe we are losing information that we can gain if we scan for uh, if in uh, in other places. So again, this is a challenge and we will see our solution to that challenge in a moment. So just to uh, re uh, just uh, before going to the solution, so looking at um, uh, the applications, applications are built from uh, application resources that are directories or images. 
each of them having packages and the packages uh, may enclose vulnerabilities. So if we, a good solution that, uh, to the challenges that we already described uh, should, uh, uh, should answer the question, where should we store the SBOM and vulnerability information? How our applications are uh, affected by new uh, vulnerabilities that are discovered? And we, uh, we should be able to traverse this graph very easily. So if I have an application, I should uh, quickly know which resources and packages uh, are, uh, is it using and which vulnerabilities are encompassed there. And also the vice versa. If I have a vulnerability in log4j, I would like to know which packages, application resources, and applications are using uh, this uh, package. So, this is it from my side, and now we will turn to Alexei to show you our solution, Cube Clarity. Thank you. So one second, I'll share the screen. Great. So exactly for the problems that uh, Zor described, we created this solution. Um, so what it includes, so we try to create, we can say it, an uni universal scanner and SBOM analyzers. So we, we actually use different scanners that uh, you just gave him an image or a directory and they just calculated it for vulnerabilities. And then a newer scanner uh, came, which was better. And we tried to understand how to compare these. And we eventually saw that if you get an accurate bill of materials, that will lead yield in accurate uh, vulnerability detection because if you don't analyze the a certain package correctly uh, so you will, will definitely not find that vulnerability so first of all we split the vulnerability scan in two phases and each phase has its own uh, benefits actually it's not only for vulnerability detection uh, so that's first we treat uh, images we can analyze and scan images in directories and it's also uh, useful for serverless. Uh, so we can not only scan CI CD pipelines as described, but we can also scan runtime Kubernetes clusters, meaning all the pods that run in your cluster. And I will show you that in a second. Um, so we don't try to be a, a scanner product. We don't try to create scanning logic or SBOM analyzing logic. Instead, we, we want to use the best tools and we saw that if we combine the leading tools, we get the, the higher accuracy. Uh, so that's what we did. We created a, 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 um, basically a pluggable infrastructure to plug your own uh, or the popular solutions uh, for SBOM generation and also for vulnerability scanning. Uh, so that's the pluggable and the universal scanner, you can call it. Uh, so after that, after we scanned all the resources, a bunch of directories and images, eventually we want to group them logically under certain applications. For example, I have my Kubernetes cluster and I have a pod that uh, consists uh, of five containers. I don't know, some heavy logic or some, somebody decided to do it. I want somehow uh, to, uh, or, or even my application consists of several pods. I, I want to combine all the resources of the pods uh, images, directories, and so on, into one logical application. So if uh, I have an issue, I will know what application I should uh, treat and uh, maybe who I should alert about it. Uh, and of course, it's not only about uh, uh, vulnerabilities. And SBOM gives you uh, and valuable information about the licenses that are being used in your software and also information about programming languages and more and more. Uh, so the, the new and popular SBOM formats, uh, they support a lot of metadata actually uh, on top of it. Um, so to address the scan stages, uh, we can split, like we said, we splitting the content analyzer, we call it the content analyzer, will eventually generate the SBOM using several SBOM generators. It will uh, understand what packages uh, consists from your uh, in your uh, image or directory and the output will be uh, if the input is an image or a file system the output will be an SBOM and this SBOM can be used as the input for the vulnerability scanner and these are the two main components the content analyzer and the vulnerability scanner 
uh, which again I'll show you in a second, they all consist of uh, parallel uh, uh, analyzers and scanners. Uh, these are the two building blocks that we use across all our solution. So the first one is the content analyzer. So as I said, the input can be an image or directory. And then uh, we need to actually the plugin or the converter needs to convert it into format of each analyzer. Um, and you, we can also put SBOM as an input. So for example, if I want to analyze uh, my base image OS base image and I want to put the SBOM of my, the code of my application, I can merge the the SBOM of the image, uh, sorry, the SBOM of the image and the SBOM of the application into one big SBOM because that's eventually what is running in your application, right? It's the uh, base image that you started from and the lo your logic that is on top of it. And of course, we need to merge uh, the SBOM result because uh, there can be duplications and probably multiple analyzer will find the same. So we need to flatten and we will show exactly who found what and uh, which one of the analyzer missed some. And the same co concept goes for vulnerability scanners. <clears throat> we, we basically can scan a directory right away, or we can use the SBOM that produced in the previous phase by the content analyzer. Uh, and again, we need probably to format it to each scanner, how it expects it uh, in order to scan the SBOM or the directory for vulnerabilities. And again, each scanner outputs the vulnerabilities in different format, their own, own private JSON or popular standards, maybe like Cyclone DX. Uh, but eventually we need to uh, format and merge them all to get uh, the clear uh, result of all the scanners uh, who found which vulnerabilities and some filtering logic, of course, to get the final result. Um, and you can mix and match and, and spread the, these two building blocks across different phases. So for example, you can uh, analyze your code when you build in the application, you can analyze your image when you build in the image, and then you can merge everything and to scan this one uh, SBOM once after you have all the packages and all your dependencies across all the phases in your uh, CI CD pipelines. And uh, <clears throat> uh, on top of that, uh, like I said, we offer runtime scans, which I'll show you in the second. It can also be used uh, for serverless. Uh, and, and also, I'll show you how we manage all the resources, I mean, the images and the, how they belong to application. And how can I traverse the object tree that Zohar showed, meaning how can I uh, see what application has have what which images, and then these images consist of which packages, and these packages links to vulnerabilities, and any way you can uh, just imagine in uh, this tree. Uh, so that's a high-level architecture of the whole solution. Basically, we integrate with CI/CD pipelines like uh, I showed you with the uh, SCLI using two commands: scan and analyze. Uh, we have a, a user interface that I will show you in a second that the user can interact with. Uh, we have a, a database of SBOMs just uh, to cache stuff uh, because we, we saw that the heavy logic is to fetch and, and extract the image and uh, to go over all the layers to understand exactly the content. So we keep this uh, database uh, for better performance. And I will uh, show you in a second what is the benefit of it. And we have the runtime scan orchestrator that basically spins a job, a Kubernetes job for each unique image in the target namespaces uh, that I want to scan. And once each uh, job is complete, the scan and the analyzing, again, we have these two building blocks also in, in our uh, jobs. So the, the results are reported back to the backend, stored in the database. And so if I have this one pod that consists from image one and two, two jobs will be created for each image. Uh, if I have these two replica, this pod in two replicas, so I will do the same thing. Uh, I mean, just once, I will spin only two jobs in total, each one for a unique image in the container. Um, so what what is it good for? So uh, we saw that the scans are much faster now because to if you have already the S bomb, which uh, again the main consumer to produce it, so it decreases from is minutes, like five minutes or, or even more for big images to just a few seconds. And that means that uh, you can also integrate these tools in your admission control in Kubernetes where they are limited to a very low 
amount of time. It can be 10 or 13 seconds, depends on the configuration. Um, and again, you can dis discover your vulnerabilities across your stages and not only after the image was built, for example, and you just prevent it from being pushed. Uh, like Zor said, some of the packages may be scrapped from the final binary and you just lose these dependencies and obviously the vulnerabilities. Uh, not lose the vulnerabilities, but lose the, their detection. Uh, and eventually we saw, saw it on ourselves. So we bet on one scanner to be the best and then uh, another scanner became the leading one and we needed to change everything. And we said, hey, why not just plug in more and more scanners and then we'll have the optimal solution. And we actually saw that we got the highest detection percentage this method. Um, and I mentioned serverless again. Uh, so cool. So let's go to, to the demo and uh, show you. Uh, so here is the, the repo, uh, Cube Clarity under Open Clarity uh, with some other interesting projects. Um, so basically, it's everything that I described and it lists all the features. Uh, all you need to do to have it running in your Kubernetes cluster, you just uh, need to add the Helm repo and then uh, you can create the Helm values, you can configure it as, as much as you want, you can set different analyzers or scanners and to configure a lot of stuff there. And then just a simple Helm installation and then uh, what I'm doing here, I'm just port forwarding into, into Cube Clarity's UI and I'm accessing it uh, on a local port. Uh, so I hope the port forwarding is uh, still alive. Looks good. And that should be the, the UI of Cube Clarity. Um, great. So as you can see, this is the dashboard of Cube Clarity. We try to make it as uh, actionable as possible, meaning we don't flood it with information, but all these uh, things are meant to be uh, really actionable and uh, uh, allow you to fix your uh, vulnerabilities and gain insight of the components of your software. Uh, so, for example, here we see I already ran a few scans before, uh, but here you can see that I have uh, this amount of vulnerabilities in my cl cluster. Uh, these, out of these vulnerabilities, I have 438 which are fixable. And here we uh, sort them according to severity. So, for example, if I have critical vulnerabilities which are solvable, I can just click on this. And it's, it takes me to the vulnerabilities page with all the fil needed filters are set. Uh, only vulnerabilities which are critical uh, and have fixes. I can sort them according to, uh, uh, oh, sorry. So here it is uh, only critical, but uh, if I sort them, it also, also sorts them according to the CVSS. In this case, all are 9.8. Um, so the same goes for, for the other severities. If I want to tackle all the high severities uh, separately. So here you, you see that uh, I, maybe we want to try to uh, handle this first and maybe the lower uh, CVSS score later. And again, I can apply all the filters uh, upon all uh, fields here and columns. Uh, so if I'm going back to the dashboard, I can see that I can uh, show my top five vulnerable applications sorted by severities. Uh, again, the applications are totally logical grouping and I will show you how it's helpful in uh, Kubernetes and also non-Kubernetes. Uh, I can see which are the most vulnerable resources. So these are the images that are most vulnerable. I have this image with 31 uh, vulnerabilities. Again, everything is clickable and I can go to the vulnerabilities. And I see that my uh, free type package, for example, is the most vulnerable package in my system. So I, I uh, can go also from here. In a second, I will show you how, how I can traverse all the object tree and perform scans and all that. Uh, so just another look. So here we have uh, information which is not necessarily related to security. So here we count and show you the packages uh, by their uh, uh, open source license or license. Uh, and, and then you can see if some licenses that what is our, uh, the distribution. For example, if you want everything to be MIT or Apache or I don't know, whatever you want. So you can monitor it here. And of course, everything is clickable. So you can uh, check and go and filter these packages. Everything is filtered by MIT already. Uh, so it's not just to show you data, but you can also focus on all your Java applications, for example. Um, and you can uh, 
look at it this way. Uh, we also added here a new vulnerability trends. Um, <clears throat> and this is especially useful because we saw that if you have, for example, a periodic scan that scans your cluster every day, so you scan it and scan it, and each time you have 1,000 vulnerabilities, so each scan you will see 1,000 vulnerabilities. Meaning if a new vulnerability will be discovered, you might miss it because what is 1,000 versus 1,001? So here we created a, a new vulnerability trends, meaning if you one time scanned 1,000, great, it will be this scan, for example. In the next scan, if nothing new were discovered, you will see a flat line until a new vulnerability will be introduced. So this way you will you are not distracted by existing vulnerabilities that you already attended and you only focusing on newly discovered vulnerabilities. Uh, so that's the dashboard. Uh, so as I said, here we have applications. For example, uh, in runtime scan, all these uh, were detected automatically. In this case, these are pods that are running in the SOC shop. This is the SOC shop demo application, and it is running in the SOC shop uh, environment. And these are the labels. All of these uh, 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 fields and information were, was filled automatically. Uh, following the runtime scan, I will show you how this happened uh, in a second. Uh, I, we, I didn't mention it, but we also do CS Docker benchmark uh, on your images, so you can see the best practices of the way you created your image or, or you missed something in the Docker file or something like this. You can uh, choose it uh, all, both in CI CD and in a runtime scan. I'll show you in a second. And of course, as I mentioned, you can traverse uh, these objects. So for example, I have my user DB application. It has 113 packages. So if I click on this, this is basically the S bomb. This is, uh, but I can go first to the resources, for example. I see, OK, this is the image that uh, the only image that belongs to this application. And can, can go up the tree back to the applications, or I can go back to the resource that I just saw. I can see all the packages of this resource. Uh, and I can jump to the vulnerabilities for this package. So this is how I traverse the, the tree that Zor uh, showed in the in the slide. I can go in every direction, so I can see. Okay, this vulnerability, for example, in the log4j example that uh, uh, Zor gave. So I can. Okay, I discovered. Let's say this one is log4j. Let's see all the images that are affected by log4j. I say, okay, these are the images. Cool. So uh, I need to. Probably if I'll fix the this application resource for CVE uh, this and this, so I will know how to, what to treat in my image. And again, if I go going from packages, and I can go to the application resources. So I uh, sorry, I clicked on drill down. I forgot to mention in each line. If you go, if you click on it, you see. Uh, some more details about it. And here you can list all the applications and resources that use it in details. And what were the image hashes? You can click on it, of course, it will lead, lead you to the, back to the image. And here is, is the interesting part where we actually create a competition between SBOM analyzers. So we can see for each package, for example, if, if I uh, executed several analyzers, uh, I didn't mention it, but we currently support SIFT and uh, GoModDX. Uh, Cyclone, go mode Cyclone DX analyzers and in vulnerability scanners, we support a gripe and the dependency track. And we plan to plug more and more. And we, of course, welcome the community and everybody who wishes to donate more and more scanner integrations. So here you, you can say, okay, this scanner was better for JavaScript uh, because this package wasn't detected by Go mode or uh, whatever. Uh, so that's that can be also useful for this. Um, yeah, so I basically that solves the, the management of your vulnerabilities and as bombs and the traversal between the affected elements and to see if you interested in op operational information like the uh, code coding languages and license types and so on. Uh, so you can traverse it in any direction that you want. Uh, of course, each uh, screen here has filters to find exactly what you need and sort according to any property here. Uh, so I'll just show you real quick the runtime scan. I already executed it. So here uh, we actually need to, uh, we will introduce a schedule scan really quick in the upcoming days. Uh, so currently the only option is whether you want CS Docker benchmark, benchmark or not. So for example, if I disable it 
and I just start the scan. And I can select the scope uh, of the names. These names are detected automatically in my cluster. So if I want to scan and uh, I want to add, uh, I don't know, Istio system, I can remove it and I uh, can just initiate the scan. So basically what is going on currently relates to the high uh, level architecture that I showed you. Uh, all the discover, we discover all the pods in the, in the namespace. We discover the unique images, uh, spin a job for each image, uh, and then uh, we check in the SBOM DB, and that's why the result was so quick now when I scanned the, the more than 10 images uh, now. Um, yeah, so I see that 13 images were affected by the scan. Uh, I can also filter by application by uh, vulnerability severity. For example, show me all the resources, the elements, sorry, that are affected by critical vulnerabilities. So I have 42 uh, critical vulnerabilities, which I can go uh, there. As, I can, as you can see, we have something that we call a system filter that show you the context that we are watching the screens now. So we reuse the same screens. We, we don't put the information in different places. So now I'm focusing on the vulnerabilities. So instead of each time going back here and clicking on packages, so I can go uh, from here to vulnerabilities, back to packages, back to affected applications. And again, if I want to narrow the search, um, I can do it uh, with, with a more critical vulnerability. As you can see, all the filters are set automatically here. <clears throat> And I can also delete this filter, or I can delete this filter, and I'm going back to normal as if I clicked on this uh, screen. Um, so yeah, just let me show you if I enable the CS Docker benchmark again. Uh, so here we, you don't see the section, but if I scan uh, it again, so it should take a bit longer because uh, we are do doing extra work here. It's not only SBOM and uh, vulnerability detection, we all, all also benchmark for CS uh, Docker uh, this time. So I hope that in a few seconds we can show the results. And again, all this is under active development. We, uh, we change this every day, adding more and more features to it. Um, so yeah, this time you see the Docker benchmark. For example, you can filter it not only vulnerabilities. Uh, so Docker benchmark, not not related to packages and vulnerabilities it's related to images so i can see all the images that have a fatal warning for example and again i can drill down and see uh, the exact reasons for that um so one last feature that i want to show is the integration maybe with ci cd pipelines so it, i can create my application uh, manually for example uh, demo app and uh, i can say this that's going to be a pod, but it doesn't really matter. App equals demo. I don't need to set the environment for now. Uh, so I can, again, search it from here. Application name, for example, contains demo. And uh, this is my application. So as you see, no vulnerabilities or Docker benchmark or packages or anything, because I don't know anything about it. I just created it. Um, so I want to scan it uh, in ICLI, which basically uh, mimics the CI/CD. <clears throat> the CI, which this, this CLI can be used in CI/CD pipeline. So uh, again, everything is the readme of the project. I uh, just created it quickly, so I won't need to type it. So this is the port forwarding screen. Yeah. Can you still see my screen? Zor? Yes, we can still see your screen. OK, sorry, I clicked on something. <laughs> I hope it didn't hit uh, the sharing. OK, cool. So basically, here I copied all the CLI to analyze the Nginx, for example, the Nginx image. I just need to provide the application ID, uh, which is created here. So yeah, it would take, uh, I don't know, about uh, several seconds or up to a minute to analyze. OK, great. It was quick to analyze the Nginx image. Uh, so this actually produced the SBOM, demo app.sbom. That's what I did. Uh, so you can see it here. So let's scan this SBOM file using uh, our scanner. Uh, so I can also 
control the scanners that are used for uh, for simplicity and quickness i will just use gripe for now uh, so basically it tells you uh, to scan the demo app dot sbom and the input type is sbom and not an image again i'll need the application id uh, here I forgot to mention everything that you see in the UI, we have an API for it. So you don't have to go to the UI and stuff like this. You can, uh, every, we have a swagger and a generated code that you can uh, create your own tools programmatically to fetch all the required information. And uh, so that's exactly what we use in the UI. So now I uh, scanned this as bomb. Uh, and also if, if I want to, also scan it for Docker file. So uh, Docker, so sorry, CS Docker benchmark. I I can run uh, this additionally. Again, taking the app ID. Yeah. So this also should take uh, several seconds, and uh, I will show you if I refresh, I will have all this information in the UI, and actually in my backend. Because I use the, I will show you, I'll use everywhere the minus E flag, which basically tells you to export the information to this address, which is currently localhost, but it can be anything. I just use port forward. So if I refresh, so you can see that all the licenses are being analyzed. I know all the vulnerabilities, the CS Docker benchmark of this image, I know the packages. I can see the, the SBOM and all the vulnerabilities. Again, sh sort them and uh, do whatever I want. Probably so something was affected here in the newly discovered vulnerabilities. Um, but I think that's uh, pretty much uh, overall view of all the uh, features that we have. And just a quick word uh, about our roadmap. So of course, we planning to integrate additional SBOM analyzers and scanners because this is the core uh, of the tool uh, and the idea to run as many as possible and the best that suits your needs and programming languages and OS distributions uh, to get the highest detection results. Um, so we, we are working actively to integrate with, the, uh, with the supply chain security and SIG store and image signing and know that uh, tools like in Toto, uh, cosine, you know, the six store elements. Um, so that's what we are actively working on now. And of course, system settings and user management is always nice. Uh, so that's the next to come. Uh, thank you very much. And so, uh, so thank you, is there any questions? Yeah, let's go ahead and take some Everybody pop them in the chat box if you have any. So until they will be populated, I'll just mention why we we even why we cared. So this is because uh, we we are using this open source in our in our own uh, soft uh, in our own offering. Uh, and of course, we we are welcoming uh, everybody in the community to contribute to that. Uh, so uh, you uh, you and others may also use this generic uh, scanner uh, that is bringing you you know the best of all worlds. All right. Ooh. Anyone have any questions? There we go. Yes, yeah, so great question. The question is, uh, do you have repo containing fixed uh, open source package versions as well as vendors fixed package? mediation um, so great question not yet uh, so uh, we have uh, the fixed version and you can uh, go to the external links that are known in the vulnerability database uh, but that's a great item i think that we can add uh, on the map so we brought the remediation uh, to the point where we detect 
which are the vulnerable elements and what application it affect. But uh, I think that uh, it will be great to maybe automate some procedure, like uh, maybe the panda bot is doing in GitHub that says, oh, oh uh, I cr all created, already detected all the fixes and I prepared the pull request for you, just approve it. Uh, so maybe for environments that uh, don't have uh, dependabot and tools like this, uh, maybe it also can be useful. So thanks a lot for the advice. All right, does anyone else have a question? Going once, going twice. <laughs> okay, well, with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you so much, Alexei and Zohar, for your presentation. Looks like it was very concise and everyone is pretty clear. Um, if you want to share in the chat any channels where anyone can reach you or follow up with any additional questions, feel free to pop those into the chat now for everyone. Um, and if not, we will see everyone the next time around in our in another CNCF Live webinar. Thank, Thank you, you both so much for hosting. Thanks a lot, Libby. Thanks a lot, everybody who attended. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.